coming back to the girls, the women and girls that are the second group of highly vulnerable um, community or groups of people, um, we know that every emergency is women and girls, and particularly adolescent girls, who are most impacted by disasters and humanitarian crises, and COVID-19 is absolutely no exception in that way. Um, the girls tend to be the first to be withdrawn from school because they're held, um, you know, they're supposed to help the family with respect to domestic chores, fetching water, taking care of their younger siblings, that sort of thing. And they're often the last to go back to school for the same reasons to hold to help um, to help the household. But also we're seeing increases in uh, child marriage. Child marriage is often used as a coping strategy by households that are extremely vulnerable as um, you know, it enables a household to you know, marry off a family and make sure a, a, a daughter and and then she becomes uh, the responsibility of another family. So we're seeing increases of child marriage out of almost desperation, really. Um, and then we're also seeing increases of gender based violence. And I think this was raised before, but we actually have evidence of that now. There's a gender based uh, violence tracking system in Central African Republic. And we just learned today there's already been a 3% increase in intimate partner violence in Central African Republic um, than there was a year ago and we are pretty much sure this is a result of COVID-19 and the isolation that that brings and the inability for women and girls um, to be able to access uh, um, support structures during that uh, period because they're isolated and they just don't have information they don't know where to go so what's plan doing about it we are um, we're doing a, a a lot around getting keeping girls in school um, and trying to continue education uh, if the if the schools are open keep them in, in schools and if they're closed continuing education as i mentioned before with a variety of different um, platforms but we're also doing messaging using adolescent girls themselves so adolescent girls um, young leaders and and adoles adolescent girls from the communities everywhere from Indonesia to Senegal to Nigeria I mean Latin America we, El Salvador Nicaragua we have these amazing young vocal adolescent girls who are undertaking radio messages around the dangers of child marriage what to do if you face abuse or sexual abuse, how to access sexual and reproductive health services and where to go um, in terms of using a hotline service. We have partnerships with Child Line, which is sort of like a, a hotline ser service for young people to phone in. Um, and we also have SMS messaging uh, that we use through our peer groups. So we're really trying to empower the voice of young women and uh, in this time of COVID-19, we're also uh, advocating very loudly to donors and uh, UN agencies as they roll out and country ministries of um, in our in the governments uh, where we work to ensure that these COVID-19 response plans are very um, careful to take into consideration the gender dimensions of COVID-19.